Good morning, and thank you for attending police headquarters. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute, and I am here today to introduce Superintendent Scott Baptist of 13 Division. He will be updating you on a break and enter investigation. Hi. Thanks, Carolyn. Good morning. Uh, we are pleased to inform the public that a suspect has been arrested for a string of break and enters that have occurred across the city of Toronto between February 11th and May 17th of this year. These entries were focused primarily on commercial premises. Five of the entries were committed into synagogues in the Bathurst and Wilson, Bathurst and Lawrence neighborhoods. These crimes have caused significant public concern. The investigation into these occurrences has brought together investigators from 13, 53, 32 division, 31 division, 12 and 22 divisions. These investigators have worked collaboratively to identify the criminal trend as it was occurring to identify the suspects responsible for the various entries and to work with a wide variety of community partners to inform those affected and to solicit their cooperation with the investigation. On May 13th, we issued a media release to inform the public at large of the entries that were occurring and to seek the public's assistance in locating three of the individuals responsible for the entries. At approximately 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning, May 17th, Sergeant Marchak of 53 Division, a uniformed sergeant on patrol, investigated a male matching the description of one of the suspects in the area of Chaplin Crescent and Eglinton Avenue West. The investigation led to the arrest of Joshua Moskaluk, aka Joshua Reed, aged 37 years of no fixed address. Moskaluk is now facing 26 charges in relation to these entries, 26 for break and enter, two for theft of auto. Moskaluk has also violated his parole provisions and a warrant is being executed in relation to this violation. He appeared in College Park Court yesterday and has been remanded to College Park again on May 25th. This investigation is ongoing into these and many other entries. Many additional charges will be laid in the coming days and weeks ahead as investigators put together the case. I would like to take this opportunity to commend the investigators involved on their hard work and commitment to this investigation. And I would also like to thank all of the community members who assisted us, Toronto Community Housing, Toronto Transit Commission Security, faith leaders, building superintendents, gas station managers, and the victims of these entries, many of whom have video security systems that have greatly contributed to this investigation. We cannot stress enough the value of video security footage to police in investigating crimes of this nature. There are a number of outstanding suspects also wanted in relation to these crimes, including some that we are seeking the public's assistance in locating. For this, I'll turn the mic over to Detective Sergeant Dan Sabatix of 53 Division. Dan. Good morning. Um, as the superintendent indicated, this uh, crime spree has been occurring, commercial residences, our commercial properties, and uh, synagogues as well, all in that general vicinity uh, between our neighboring divisions, 13, 32, and 53 division as well. We found that they've started to spread across the city. Uh, Moskaluk was identified early, and we've subsequently arrested him as the superintendent indicated. However, we have outstanding parties that were part of his working group. Uh, the first one is uh, Chance Jensen, and uh, i have a picture up there shortly. Uh, currently wanted by numerous divisions on several warrants, including uh, assault, fail to comply probation, uh, break and enter. The other party that's wanted, currently there's a warrant out for break and enter for uh, Brian Rutherford. So those two parties have currently been identified. We're still investigating regarding other parties. However, these uh, entries all seem to have occurred between the hours of midnight and seven in the morning. And we got a lot of uh, activity from 3 a.m. onward. <clears throat> this is of import because uh, what we found when we affected the arrest in the early morning hours, they do not, uh, these uh, outstanding parties as well as Moskaluk, tend to hide themselves. They're out in plain view on some of the main thoroughfares, checking out what they're going to hit next. A lot of the locations they hit were on Young Street, Bloor Street, Bathurst. So a lot of the main thoroughfares. Um, We've deployed our officers accordingly and directed patrols during those hours at those locations looking for these parties. What we ask from the public is there are a lot of people out there at that time. Taxi drivers, for example, 
uh, delivery people delivering early in the morning, if they can be vigilant in regards to any suspicious activity or these parties out there and notify the police so that we can respond. Because uh, the, we are hoping that with Moskalak apprehended, that's the end of it. However, we still want these other parties and we're hoping that they don't continue to engage in the entries. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sort of questions for detectives. Uh, these video surveillance videos are recently upgraded, or can you tell us uh, what's the resolution of this video? Because I've seen those uh, crappy videos before, but these videos resolution is really perfect. Because of what the superintendent indicated, us working with the other divisions and the other major crime units, we've uh, managed to uh, get video with better resolutions from different scenes. So they get the video, they might not know who it was. We had persons of interest. By working together, we identify them, but by them supplying some of the video, it's not our video per se. It's from different locations. And as well, there's sometimes a delay with video uh, processing it. Uh, this is our most recent. And then, of course, some of the pictures are booking photos, which are, of course, obvious. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's an integral part to our investigations is video. And, and, and as you know, nowadays, it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of it's available out there, and we, we uh, generally, by communicating with the other investigators, we find video from other locations. Sorry, are these guys uh, known to police, the board, three of them? Yes, they're wanted. Okay. They already have warrants on the system, as I indicated earlier. For example, Mr. Jensen, uh, 31 Division has a warrant for fail to comply probation. 53 Division has one for assault. So again, it's historical for other offenses as well, but yes, known to police. Any other questions? Sir, your phone name, sir? Daniel Sabatix. Spell your first phone you last name. S-A-B-A-D-I-C-S. And you're with 53? 53 Division. I'm the detective sergeant there, yes. Thank you. Sorry, just one more question. Uh, can we know a rough idea how much property they have stolen? Uh, a total, I couldn't tell you right now, uh, but it was generally cash, uh, lottery tickets, jewelry, stole a couple cars, whatever the opportunity arose that they could take, electronic equipment, whatever they could take, they would take. They actually entered the synagogues uh, up in the area hoping to get uh, some of the silver or gold artifacts. They were unsuccessful, so ended up taking the car keys for keys that might have been parked there, and they removed that. So again, opportunity, whatever they could take, they would take. Have you seen any uh, image of uh, the vehicle they use in these uh, actions? Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Uh, the vehicles, the two vehicles that were stolen, uh, we recovered. However, we had an entry recently on Bloor Street at a location, and they were on bicycle and e-bike. Yeah. So really, any means um, that they could use, they would employ. So again, a, a bit of an investigative conundrum because they're hitting a synagogue with a specific MO and then they go and cross the street and they'll do a commercial entry into a convenience store. So the MOs don't match as well as they'll be on foot do an entry. They might use a car. They might use a bike. They might use an e-bike. So we're looking for a broad spectrum when we're looking for them. And to match them up again investigatively is a challenge, but we are managing to put the pieces together and that's why as the superintendent indicated, many more charges are pending because now we're getting all of the pieces together. So they didn't specify one path of how they committed their crimes. Thank you. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending.